Hi, I'm Robert with Oakwood. You know, in life and in business and in lawn care, there's certain things you just should not do. Let me show you one of them. So you just finished up that property and you smash that PTO switch down and you're like, yeah, I'm going to the next one. Well, you get to the next one and then the PTO doesn't actuate when you turn on the switch. Well, let me show you my process of elimination and how I figured out that was actually the switch. So with just a few tools, you got a 11 and one and a flathead screwdriver and a multimeter. Step one, check the voltage when the machine's running. Before we go any further, I just want to introduce you to the multimeter here. Uh, this here is an ideal. It's not always ideal, but it works well. Just kidding. My jokes aren't that funny, I know. But uh, when I was checking the voltage on the battery there, for those that may not know, it's DC, direct current. And up at the top here, it says volts, because we're checking volts, and it's a straight line, dot, dot, dot. That's the DC, okay? That's where you need to be to check voltage. And then if you're checking for AC, which these machines do produce AC and then converts it over to DC, but that's a whole nother video, uh, you would want the squiggly line that's up and down, hence the alternating current. It's up, down, up, down, so many cycles. So. DC is what you want to check for voltage at the battery, 13.5, 13.7. So now we've tested the battery. We got 13.7 volts, which that tells me that there's enough charging. This charging system is working correctly. Uh, to keep up with the engine and all the electronics that it has to work and operate because the engines actually producing AC then it converts it over to DC and that's a whole nother video in itself but step two how to determine if your PTO clutch is working properly electrically what I do is I go down there and I unplug the wires and I'll actually put this on ohms now what you're looking for it's sort of a range between two and four ohms Mine ohmed out at three, which is perfectly, uh, that's acceptable, I, it works fine. So once I determined electrically that the PTO clutch is okay, then I start looking around for any mechanical issues. I've seen them to where the, there's a bracket holding the outside of the PTO clutch break off and the whole thing starts spinning and then it rips out the wires and it's just a mess mechanically and electrically because it just rips all the wire connections apart and that's a that's a sign there that you just need to replace the whole thing or line it back up make a new bracket strip your wires fix it and you should be good to go but uh the third thing i did is i took off my dash here to get to the actual pto switch and then i'm going to check for 12 volts on the wire that sends the voltage down to the pto so let's do that next so now you're gonna see a bunch of wires and stuff. You know, you got your throttle cable and your choke and everything. Uh, this is for the hour meter. Then you have your ignition switch. And then here's the PTO switch right here. So what I do is actually just take this off. Like so. And then you can actually test for 12 volts here. Now you're gonna see a bunch of goo in here and stuff. What that is, is dielectric grease to help from corrosion. So don't get freaked out and think it's all melting down. If it gets hot, which I've seen them get hot and melt, you'll actually see the outside plastic melt down. So here we got the red wire, red and white from what I see on the schematic is actually the hot wire. And for some reason they have a little jumper cable. So it's the hot is the top left corner here. And it looks fine to me. I don't see nothing melted or anything. So it's just corroded and dirty from all the dust and debris. So what I'm gonna do is actually get my meter and put it on DC, direct current, because that's what we're measuring here. And I need to take my probes, stick the black on negative, could be on the frame or anything, 
and then stick it here. Well, I'm going to turn it on just to run. And then we'll stick the probe. And you can use a test light. Uh, I prefer a meter so that you can actually see a reading. So right now I'm just going to touch the frame because we're all grounded out and I'm reading 12.9. I don't know if you can see that with my hand. I don't have a cameraman today so trust me it's 12.9 so I got 12 volts here coming to the switch itself so I know that's good turn it off so the next thing is actually testing the switch this is the old one this is this was the issue uh, on the bottom here it could get kind of confusing at first when you first see it and you're gonna see a bunch of information on here you're gonna see a bunch of NC 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 and that stands for normally closed switch and then when you pull it up that's what sends the power to the other tabs so you got power on this side and then when you pull it up it puts the power on the other side and then it sends it down to the PTO clutch actuates it you start mowing and everybody's happy for me I didn't even bother omen out my switch because I felt it when I pulled it up it feels like a two stage one two it's either on or off. It's up all the way or down all the way. That's it. So I didn't bother ohming it out. I did ohm out my PTO clutch down below. There's a range that you need to be in between two and four. Mine was a three. So I knew the clutch down below electrically was fine. Mechanically, it's fine. It's not making any sounds. There's no heat stress marks on the outside of it. I don't smell anything hot burning like a clutch would. Yeah, so that was just a quick, simple way to diagnose what's going on with your PTO switch or clutch. I'm Robert with Oakwood. And yes, I do have a giveaway going on right now. The Darwin's Grip 6.0 with some trimmer line. So jump one video back and enter to win. I'm Robert. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you later.